So, hey everyone, I'm Sanjay Jaiswal. Uh, I work at Vivox. I am a Flagger maintainer, and I dabble around with a few cloud native technologies. Uh, I just graduated like a few months ago, and this is my first KubeCon. Uh, so I'm really excited to be here and talk about, I mean, SLO validation here. Yeah. And this is mostly Sanskar talk, uh, but I'm here to help. Uh, I'm Kingdon Barrett. I'm an open source support engineer at WeWork, and also a Flux maintainer. And this is us. Okay. Okay. Um, so how many of you have implemented progressive delivery in your clusters or, you know, played around with progressive delivery? Like, can I get a show of hands? Okay. So not, not as many people as I was expecting, actually. So, so for those of you who don't understand what progressive delivery is, let me try and convince you uh, that you should be practicing progressive delivery in your clusters because it's a really, really good thing to do. So progressive delivery is the art of introducing new software into your clusters in a safe and iterative manner. So basically what you do is when you want to introduce new software into your cluster and expose it to your end, uh, try and get very fine-grained control over the so as, to, so as to if the new version is not working as expected, if there are bugs or if it breaks features, the number of users that are impacted are Right. So what do you need to implement progressive delivery in your cluster? Well, the first thing you need is a CI pipeline is required. The next thing you need is a continuous delivery, a continuous delivery system, something like Flux or Argo or whatever have you. Right, something which can take those artifacts that have been published by your CI pipeline and d deploy them onto your cluster. Then you need a service mesh or an ingress for traffic to, uh, traffic to come through and hit your applications, right? And this is important because you, uh, you can't just use a plain old cluster IP service to you know, expose your applications, right? You need some kind of an ingress or like a load balance solution, and which in our case is a service mesh or something like uh, ingress nginx, right? So, and most importantly, for the purpose of our talk, you need a good observability stack, right? Something which you can use to track you know, things, get metrics, and validate your SLOs, and see whether KPIs are being hit. For, so the purpose of this talk, since it's prom days, we'll use Prometheus, but you can use anything you want, really. Right. So there are three main ways you can do uh, progressive delivery. I mean, that I know of, at least. So the first is uh, a canary release. A uh, canary release works uh, based on tra uh, routing traffic to different services. So you have two services, your new service and your old service, and you shift traffic from your old service to your new service in a gradual weight-based manner. Well, this is the main uh, topic of our talk. I'll just briefly describe the other two as well. So the next is alpha beta testing. I'm guessing this is more popular amongst you guys. It's a pretty old way of testing. So you have some beta users, uh, and the way you differentiate between those beta users is because they have all the traffic that they generate, the requests that they have uh, are gonna have headers on it, and you use those headers to differentiate between your beta users and beta users. Uh, and the last is blue green deployments. Blue green deployments is a bit different than the other because it doesn't actually expose any uh, new traffic to your users. So the new version is not never exposed directly to your users. What you do is, when you have your old version up and running, you stand up your new version as well, and then you run like load tests, you know, generally, gen uh, artificially generated traffic, right? So using those uh, tests, you ver verify whether the new version is working correctly or not, and that's how you do blue-green deployments. I'm gonna explain this very complex fancy looking diagram here. And there's uh, version one and a version two. So what we're doing is an upgrade. We want to do the upgrade. It's progressive delivery. So uh, as you see, see in version one, is my mic? I think my mic is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Just use this one. Okay. All right. So we're going to go from version one to version two, and we're going to do it progressively. So in Panel one, we have just version one is running with two replicas, and Flagger is, is monitoring. Um, and in version two, uh, or panel two, we've added version two. We've added a pod uh, for version two, and we've started routing some traffic to it. 
Um, meanwhile, Flagger is monitoring uh, the metrics to see that everything's going okay. And as it seems that everything is going okay, we're incrementally adding traffic to the Canary uh, version two. Uh, we go from 10% up to 50%. Once we get to 50% uh, and our metrics all still look fine, we're reasonably confident at this point that the release is good. So we begin the promotion phase. In phase four here, you see now we've begun a rolling update of the deployment of version one. So we actually have two separate deployments here, uh, if it's not clear. Uh, the version one deployment and the version two deployment, and Flagger is taking care of that for us. So in panel five, now the upgrade, the rolling update is complete, and we've shifted all the traffic to the new upgraded uh, original deployment. I'm going to call it the primary because that's what it's called in Flagger. And in version six, we tear down our canary pods and now all of the traffic is being served by the primary, actually since panel five. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so how many of you have heard about Flagger as a project or just like, you know, installed into clusters with it? Okay. Cool. Um, so Flagger is a CNCF incubating project. It falls under the Flux family of projects. Flux is the GitOps tool. Um, so the entire diagram that uh, Kingdon explained, right, in the last slide, Flagger is a Kubernetes operator which automates that entire thing. So right from shifting traffic incrementally to monitoring metrics, um, all of that is automated for you by Flagger. You can see it enables, you know, safer releases, right? And one of the things which Flagger does really good is uh, is that it handles disaster recovery very well. So if unfortunately our version two is not working as expected, it has bugs or something like that, uh, you'd want users to be shifted to the stable version ASAP, right? And that's what Flagger takes care of. So you can deploy on a Friday uh, and be satisfied that if there's something wrong with the new version, uh, your, your end users won't be impacted as much, right? Um, extensive validation, right? So you can validate your SLOs, right, using a bunch of tools, we'll use Prometheus for the demo, but yeah, you can see these are some of the things we support. And there, uh, it has an extensive webhook mechanism, which you can use to uh, run load tests and various acceptance tests uh, throughout every phase of the canary, so that if you wanna say that I wanna run some different tests uh, at 20% of, uh, of the weight, and if I wanna run some different tests when, uh, it's being, when the new version is being promoted, Flagger allows for that. And um, this is one of my favorite features about Flagger. It's not a feature, it's more like the list of integrations we have. So we support pretty much every other ingress service mesh out there. Uh, you can just see some of the logos. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but yeah, it's a pretty extensive list. And we also have support for Gateway API, which is the new standard for, uh, supposed to be the new standard for networking and load balancing in uh, Kubernetes. And as more and more projects start adopting uh, Gateway API, we are confident that we will be working with all of them. Canary definition. Uh, this is the uh, main unit of currency of Flagger. So we're going to define a canary and we're going to start with some targets. So we have a target deployment and that's the deployment that I mentioned before that Flagger is going to copy um, for us uh, and make a primary out of it. Uh, we also have a service. We can have an autoscaler ref. Um, the service Flagger will create and uh, we have an analysis section, which is really the interesting part. Uh, so as you see, we have uh, a schedule, there's an interval, um, there's a threshold, it's kind of unfortunately named, this is the number of uh, failures that are in order to uh, eventually land at a successful release that they want to go on. Um, the max weight is the point at which we should stop and we start motion. Uh, step weight is uh, every 5% we add. And, and here the metrics is really the interesting part uh, for today because we can add custom metrics here uh, or any kind of metric. So there are predefined metrics. There are a couple of metrics that are listed here. And then there's this webhook section, which is also very interesting. Uh, you can use it for things like uh, inline testing and also uh, pre-flight validation as well as load testing here. So. Um, so I'm just gonna try to tie it all together and explain to you in a, in a very uh, 
a brief manner how Flagger actually works. So you apply the canary object, uh, and Flagger is basically reconciling that uh, canary object. But Flagger is uh, a bit different than other Kubernetes operators in the way that um, you are not continuously reconciling the state, right? So a, a typical Kubernetes operator would continuously reconcile the state of the cluster to match your desired state, right? But uh, in the case of Flagger, you have certain intervals where you want to run the canary uh, release, where especially, more specifically, when you introduce a new version or you change something in a deployment. Uh, rest of the times, Flagger is sitting there idle. Um, so the way it works is uh, we wanted to be as, um, ba as like, pretty much loaded as possible so that you as users don't have to do anything do anything much. So what Flagger does is uh, you give it a deployment. It creates uh, an exact deployment for you. So and it names it primary deployment. And then you have a canary deployment. So the primary deployment is a stable deployment. It's the one that you, uh, it's the one that you will want your users to hit all, uh, all the time. And then you have a canary deployment where you are running all sorts of experiments. Right? So what Flagger does is um, it, it basically creates services for your canary and your primary deployments, right? So all you need is to create a primary deployment, and you need to have your services set up. And Flagger will create, uh, will create or handle all of these other objects. So what Flagger does is, uh, it sees that, oh, I have a Kinetic deployment, and you know, it's a new version. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to scale this up, and I'm going to scale that up, and then I'm going to use an HTTP route. So HTTP route is a generic term that I've used here. Uh, it can be anything. It can be an Istio virtual service. It can be a SMR traffic split. It can be a Kinetic uh, Nginx. Right? It can be anything. Anything which can distribute traffic um, to uh, to different services can be considered an HTTP route. So what Flag what Flagger does is it orchestrates this HTTP route to basically route traffic based on weights to to these two different right. And what it does is it uses to check the metrics based on those uh, metric validation. It will you know drive the analysis forward. Um, so this in a nutshell how Flagger works. We'll, we'll understand more when we see the demo. Okay, I'm going to talk about this section. Um, these are uh, metrics in PromQL. You've probably seen something like this before if you're here at Prometheus Day. Um, just to point out on the left, uh, this is a metric for Nginx, and it has a, a namespace and a target um, interval setting. We're looking for a latency under a particular number, so it has this by LE that means less than or equal. And um, on the right, we have another metric. This one is for error rate. It looks a little bit different. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because, like I said, you've probably seen things like this before. But this one is um, out of 100%. So we're multiplying by 100 after we divide the numerator by the denominator. Numerator, numerator is successful requests uh, that are not in the 500 range. And then the uh, denominator is the number of total requests. So. mine too. Uh, also, so uh, this is a metric template, and we're going to take advantage of one of our definitions that we've just written. Uh, so here we're plugging our uh, not found percentage. So actually, we'd like to redefine uh, the error code. We'd like to say uh, we're really interested in 404s. We don't want there to be 404s in our release. So um, we're just going to go ahead and make this not found percentage metric template, and we can plug it in to Flagger. This might be useful if you have like a JavaScript application that is actually serverless, and uh, really the 404 is the only bat, the only signal that you get from it, maybe. Uh, or there could be other reasons why you want to do something like this, but uh, that's the main event here. Uh, if you just go, like, sure. This kind of uh, this this object is basically the crux of how uh, Flagger you know validates metrics. So if you see here, you have um, a type and an address, right, in the metric template object. And this is how you can have multiple different uh, observability stacks running in parallel, and you can use all of them and basically have a very complex uh, you know, mechanism on how you want to promote new versions in your, uh, in your uh, cluster. And this is how you attach a metric template to a canary object, and then you have this whole way of where you can say, you know, the you, so in our case, we don't want the not found percentage to be more than 5%, right? And that every one, every one minute, 
Plagger is going to check whether, you know, uh, like, so not Plagger is going to check, Prometheus is going to check. Uh, that whether the fire percent as well. So like if you have Okay. Okay. Good. So if latency is a big concern uh, in your so you can have something like a latency Okay. Okay. So latency is like a big concern. So you can have like a latency template which says that uh, you can have a, a latency template which would say something like uh, I don't want the latency to be more than 500 milliseconds something like that. It's very accessible and like it, it sky's the limit uh, on how you want to do that. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about um, a rather new software called Kada. How many of you have heard about Kada? Just like for sure. Okay. That's, that's a good number. Um, so Kada is, um, if I were to give it a tagline, I would say it's, it's HPA on steroids. Um, so it's like a more advanced HPA version, uh, HPA thing. Listen to it can get events from it can run queries on and based on the based on those metrics or whatever events it gets it can scale up and down uh, deployments and it can also work for jobs. This uh, can be instrumented with Prometheus, right? So if it's an instrument deployment, Kada will scale the, those metrics, right? And uh, 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 metrics. And based on that, uh, Prometheus uh, can expose those metrics, right? And uh, based on those metrics, Kada will scale the deployments. So this is a more powerful version of how you can do uh, scaling than HPAs. So we just wanted to highlight that because when you are uh, doing testing, uh, it, uh, load testing can also be a very, very important factor. And uh, if you if you only have like one deployment running for your canary, uh, it's you're more li you're more likely to run into problems of memory or uh, errors or something like that because it won't simulate real world conditions. In real world conditions, we have auto scaling enabled to you know co uh, cope with you know Argo setup like a GitOps tool setup. Um, if you specify the replicas field in a deployment, that's just a recipe for disaster. You should never do that. In case if you're doing that, don't do that. Never do that because that can lead to all sorts of problems. So you should always have a scaler uh, auto scaler setup. So just to go back quickly to the diagram, it's pretty much the same diagram, but there's a new addition, there's a new component in the diagram, which is Kada. See so that Prometheus is like really driving everything here, right? If you remove Prometheus, Flagger will not be able to determine whether your version two is performing expected or not. It won't be able to route, increase the traffic. And Kada won't be able to scale the deployment if the Prometheus is not working. So like Prometheus is, uh, Prometheus or any other observability tool is very, very essential to how you uh, implement progressive delivery in your clusters. Okay, so it's demo time. We're gonna start with a preview of something. Enterprise. Permission to show this off because it shows very well how Flagger works. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, I, I thanks. I need to do a quick port forward. Oh, it's already forwarded. That's good. And I'm going to need to switch this to. HTTPS and start my port forward again because I made a mistake. So we're going to go to the delivery tab. This is the piece that you won't get on Weave GitOps, um, the free version, open source. Uh, but uh, we can see we have a canary here. And we can see. Uh, that it's in a failed state, which means it's rolled back from a previous attempt to upgrade. Uh, we have a list of objects that the canary is aware of, and we can see uh, things like the deployment uh, primary and canary. So here's our primary and here's our canary. Uh, so when we do the upgrade, we'll see this one kick into action. And uh, we have a list of events 
and we can see that our, uh, we have defined a custom metric here as well as uh, one of the built-in ones. So, all right, and there's the YAML view. So we're going to try and upgrade now. All right, what I'm doing here, I'm just changing the image out. So we're gonna deploy pod info again with a new image. We'll, we'll see pod info is running here. Pod info dot demo dot test here. So we can see. And we're just gonna kick flux here. We're gonna tell it to reconcile immediately so we don't have to wait for this part. And this is normally where I would go into the terminal and pull up the canary, but since we've received permission to show our, our flagger UI, uh, we can see here. Doing right now is uh, it's updating the so you we have two ingresses one is a, one is handling the uh, it's basically uh, configuring the engine uh, uh, engine to traffic to the primary and now so right now it's progressing so here you now five percent of the traffic and ninety five percent traffic. 95, uh, to the primary deployment, right? If if you were to simulate a real world condition, five percent of your users would be experiencing, the and uh, all this while uh, trying to check whether the metrics are being met. So there is, we uh, what we haven't shown you here is a, is there a load tester that's running trying to simulate real, world, right? And that's how uh, we're trying to show that when when we have like different metrics. A flagger will automatically validate those metrics for you. So right now it's trying to validate those and the traffic uh, for you. So we have a little misconfiguration here, and I'm going to say it's on purpose. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, it hasn't gone past five percent. Right. Um, so the reason for that, uh, I'm not going to get into right now, but we have another version here. We'll show. Um, that will progress. What we want, what we want to see here, is that it eventually aborts because very the request go through to the new um, canary. Radius is really uh, limited of our misconfiguration. Right. Yeah. So, so if you were to assume that this not progressing right now is a bad version, only five percent of the traffic, uh, five percent of the users. Which is a good thing, uh, as opposed to if you're just run a case, then 100% of the users would have been impacted by the bad version. Switch? Yeah. Okay. Let me know what's visible, what's not. Is this fine? Okay, cool. Okay, this is messed up, but okay, we'll get through it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, am I audible or do I need this mic? Okay, cool. Um, so here we have a metric template which defines the latency uh, based on Istio workloads. So I have a Istio virtual service up and running, right? Um, so this basically defines that we, we want, this actually calculates the latency for every request that comes in, right? And this is our uh, scaled object. Uh, so this is what Keda uses to uh, scale, uh, scale your deployments. Um, so it's pretty simple. We say that we want to scale uh, the pod for deployment. Uh, we want to do, we want to check in 10 seconds what's happening. Uh, we want at least one replica running at all times and we want a maximum replica of three. And this is how you configure you to listen to Prometheus. So you say, I want to listen to a Prometheus server. And this is where it's located at. And this is the query I want to run. And this is the threshold at which I want to start scaling up my deployments. Pretty simple. 
Right. So let's uh, let's go to the canary. Okay. So here we have a canary. Uh, it's pretty simple as we explained earlier as well. I'll just go through it quickly. So we say that we want to run the check every 15 seconds. Uh, we want to uh, we want a maximum 15 failure checks before we decide that you know it's time to roll back. This was a bad version, and we want to take 10% uh, step bets. Uh, step bets basically that which means that uh, we want to increase the traffic by 10% every 15 seconds, and we want to do that until we reach a 50% uh, traffic uh, split into the canary. At which point we can say that uh, our new version is perfect, uh, working perfectly. Right. So. This is the state, uh, canary version. This is the beta version. This is the primary version. Both of them are at 6.0.1, right? Both of them are at 6.0.1, uh, and this is right now at zero replicas. It's not, it's not working. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna change the version to 6.0.2 to the of the canary deployment. So this is simulating a change in our introducing a new software into our cluster. Okay. So what's happening is that we have a virtual service here, right? Okay. So this virtual service is what's actually you know like shifting traffic based on what Flagger is doing. So if we can, if we uh, do a quick watch here. So right now, 100% uh, of the traffic is going to the primary, and 0% of the traffic is going to the canary, right? So if we look at what uh, Flagger is doing, is that now we have our pod info deployment has been scaled up from zero replicas to one replica. So now Flagger is going to start sending some sending some traffic to the canary version, right? Right. So 10% of traffic is going to the canary service, and 90% of traffic is going to the primary service, right? And in the background, Flagger is checking the metrics based on the Prometheus server and seeing whether everything is working fine or not. So we can see that as well. Uh, let me put forward. I forgot I was going to put forward. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, so we can see here, so we have uh, something called uh, red metrics and use metrics. I'm guessing this is PromQL, so most of you are familiar with what red and use metrics are. In case you're not, uh, red basically calculates like, you know, stuff like requests, uh, latency, error rate, and use calculates CPU usage, memory usage, bandwidth, etc. So as you can see here, some, tr uh, so some traffic is going to the primary and some traffic is going to the canary, but you can see primary is getting most of the traffic compared to the canary because 90% of traffic is going to the primary and 10% of traffic is going to the canary. And these metrics are being validated by, by Flagger in the background so that when these, uh, when these metrics are you know, like, uh, properly validated, Flagger will start shifting more traffic to the canary. And that's gonna keep happening until we reach a point where 50% of traffic is percent traffic. And at that point, we can, see, we can be satisfied with our new version and we can say that this, is, this version works fine. What's going on? I'm going to exit uh, exit into a port. Right. So here you can see that we hit the canary deployment, and if we hit the the primary deployment, right? So it's it depends on the way it's uh, configured. So be, be, uh, so like if we keep doing it, uh, we're hitting the primary deployment, right? But if I keep doing it, I keep doing it. Now I have the Canary deployment, right? The new version. So this is what your users are going to be experiencing. Um, if you want to enable some kind of a sticky session thing, uh, that is being worked on. Uh, actually, it's like there's a PR open right now, which I'm working on. We can we are trying to add sticky session support to this as well, so that if if you have a, if you have a use case for some kind of a legacy application where if a user falls onto the new application, you don't want them to go, to go back to the legacy application. That is also being worked on. Right now, if you want to do this, you can do this using A-B testing. Uh, you 
can just have headers for your uh, beta users, but then you won't get this uh, progressive delivery step. Uh, it'll just be all your beta users in one go. Right. So just thank you. So I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna do a quick get of the Canary, and it says it's promoting right now. So right now, 50% of traffic went to the Canary, uh, and uh, we're, we're all fine. We're all good, right? Everything is working fine. Uh, Prometheus said we're okay. This version, uh, this version works great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the new version, the Canary deployment, 6.0.2, and I'm gonna tell primary to be at 6.0.2, which was at 6.0.1 previously. So by now we should be done. We are done, we're almost done. So we'll just do a quick uh, watch on the deployments. Yeah. And one thing which I couldn't really show you during the demo is if you see, Pod for Primary is at three replicas right now, right? But when we started, uh, it was at one replica. And that is due to uh, the scaled object that we defined. So Keda uh, noticed that traffic is being generated to the uh, pod info deployments, and based on that, the replicas got scaled up to three. And if you see here, both pod info and both pod info primary is at 6.0.2, right? But the pod info is scaled to zero, uh, to zero replicas, right? So all the traffic right now is going to the primary deployment. And we can validate that by looking at the virtual service as well. Right, so all so pod info primary has 100% of the weight, and pod info canary has 0% of the weight. Right, so this basically shows like this demo was meant to show you how you can promote a new promote a new version safely in your production clusters by shifting traffic gradually. And you know, like now we can say that all all our 100% of the users are experiencing the primary version, and we can be more confident about that. Yeah, so that's it for the demo. Um, thanks for coming, guys. Thanks very much for your attention. Excellent job, Sanskar. Thank you. Oh, we do. I thought we were over time. I I wanted quick. I was I was I was I was, I was running through it fast because I, was, I thought it was over time. Do we have? Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> we are. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, and sorry about the technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Nice talk. Uh, so yeah, in two minutes, we'll uh, talk about runbook automation systems for Prometheus and Kubernetes. Sorry? Yeah, so if there are any questions, they are still here, and, and I'm happy to answer them after afterwards. Oh, and come see us at the talk, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you, and sorry again.